Welcome to another big train tour at the Colorado Railroad Museum. This month, we'll be taking a look at a typical 19th century narrow gauge coach built for Colorado's pioneering Denver and Rio Grande. Acquired by the museum in 1967 and subsequently restored, this lucky survivor carried passengers along the Rio Grande's lines well into the 20th century. Today, Denver and Rio Grande Western Coach 284 is proudly displayed at the museum in Golden. Hi, I'm Paul Hammond, Executive Director of the Colorado Railroad Museum. Our subject today is that most common type of railroad passenger car, a coach. Built in the early 1880s for the rapidly expanding Denver and Rio Grande Railroad, this particular coach would continue to serve throughout the Rio Grande's narrow gauge network well into the 20th century. Come join me now as we explore the history of Denver and Rio Grande Western coach number 284. The pioneering Denver and Rio Grande Railroad had its beginnings in 1871 when it constructed its first trackage from Denver south to Colorado Springs. The next year, the line reached Pueblo. The financial panic of 1873 stopped pretty much all railroad construction in Colorado for the next several years. In 1876, the year stated was achieved for Colorado, rival Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe had also made it into Pueblo, building from the south. A complex battle ensued over which railroad would gain footholds over Raton Pass to the south and the Royal Gorge to the west. While this conflict played out, the Rio Grande constructed a line over La Veda Pass into Alamosa in the San Luis Valley. By the late 1870s, the Denver and Rio Grande had settled its dispute with the Santa Fe and was building tracks through the Royal Gorge toward the mining boomtown of Leadville. Starting in the early 1880s, it would also build west from the Royal Gorge Line over Marshall Pass and head for Gunnison and then on to Grand Junction via the Black Canyon of the Gunnison River. By 1883, Rio Grande tracks reached Salt Lake City and Ogden. From Alamosa, the Rio Grande built south to Antonito, Colorado, where it turned west toward the mineral-rich San Juan Mountain Range in southwest Colorado. The line traversed Cumbres Pass on its way to Durango and then Silverton. Another Rio Grande line headed south out of Antonito to Española, later being extended to Santa Fe, New Mexico. In just three years, between 1880 and 1883, more tracks would be built in Colorado that had been constructed for the entire 13 years previous. Much of this new mileage was the Denver and Rio Grandes. It was into this very aggressive expansion that our subject coach was born. The Rio Grande in the early 1880s was busy purchasing locomotives, freight cars, and passenger cars to meet the demands of all this new trackage. Between 1880 and 1882 alone, the railroad ordered 59 new narrow gauge coaches from the well-established car builder Jackson and Sharp located in Wilmington, Delaware. These cars were somewhat longer than earlier Denver and Rio Grande coaches, with the car body itself measuring slightly over 38 feet in length. Constructed in 1881, our coach was originally numbered 60. The cars were built of wood, featuring arched single-pane windows and so-called duckbill roofs. The car's exterior was painted in a rich maroon color covered with glossy varnish with imitation gold leaf lettering and beautiful ornate striping following then common Victorian era architectural styles. The rather squat windows resulted in a very large letterboard where the railway's name was painted above the windows. The interiors featured decorative period wood paneling and trim, ornate painted ceilings, decorative oil lamp fixtures for lighting, and ornate plush seating. The seats were the walkover type meaning that at the end of a trip, the seat backs could be reversed by a crew member walking through the car and throwing each seat back to face the opposite direction. A toilet facility was located in a small enclosure at one end of the car. Two coal stoves were provided for heating in opposite corners of each end. Notably, these coaches were equipped with automatic air brakes from the very beginning. 
The Denver and Rio Grande had decided that with its steep grades and many curves, the risk of accidents was just too great to rely on handbrakes only. The coupling mechanism, rather than being the early Lincoln pin style, was originally a spring-loaded Miller hook design which allowed train crews to safely couple and uncouple passenger cars without endangering their fingers, limbs, and lives. The lowly railroad coach isn't always a topic of focus. Historians and enthusiasts tend to spend more time researching more glamorous business cars and other specialized rail vehicles such as dining cars, sleeping cars, and even locomotives. Yet the coach is where most travelers spent their time when riding a train on the Rio Grande's narrow gauge system. During its 85 plus year service life, our coach would roam all over Colorado and even into Utah and New Mexico. It would serve not only miners and businessmen, farmers and ranchers, but also women and children traveling to and from rural and urban areas. Very simply put, Coach 284 spent many decades helping people get around the Centennial State. Coach 60 was initially placed in general service on the Denver and Rio Grande. As such, it likely was part of trains traveling from Denver throughout the expanding narrow gauge system, reaching south to Pueblo and west to Leadville, Salida, Grand Junction, Durango and Silverton, even Salt Lake City and Ogden. Some of these trips would have been rather lengthy, with the trip from Denver to Silverton, for instance, being an overnight journey of nearly 500 miles. Traveling from Denver to Ogden, Utah, was even longer, at just under 775 miles total via Marshall Pass. A general renumbering of all Rio Grande passenger equipment in 1886 meant that Coach 60 now became Coach Number 284. It would keep this number for the rest of its service life. Interestingly, quite a few coaches, just like the 284, had already been wrecked or retired within a relatively short period of time. These early coaches must have seen some very hard service in those busy early years. The railroad ordered more coaches in 1887, and these new coaches took the numbers of the missing fleet members. Coach number 284 kept right on rolling throughout Colorado as the Rio Grande Narrow Gauge Railroad Network served an expanding population statewide. In the first couple of decades of the 20th century, Coach 284 saw its Miller hook couplers replaced with the now standard Janey Automatic style. More noticeably, its roofline was rebuilt to a style known as Bullnose. As delivered end windows were blanked off adjacent to stoves. These windows had tended to break because of heat differentials, and removing them helped the cars to retain heat during Colorado's cold winters. Another change to the car's exterior appearance took place during World War I. The United States Railway Administration had assumed operation of the entire U.S. railway network, and during this time the USRA mandated a number of standardization efficiencies. One was in the form of a directive to the Rio Grande, insisting that the railroad paint its passenger fleet in a standard green color. The railroad complied, and soon its maroon-colored passenger fleet was a thing of the past. In the early 1920s, following the railroad's return to private operation and as part of a fleet-wide improvement program, Coach 284 was rebuilt with a reinforced underframe. Smaller diameter wheels were installed, lowering the car body slightly. New outer side bearings were added, along with large bolster castings, which can be seen underneath the car today, just above the wheel sets. These changes together helped reduce car rocking and the overall risk of derailment. Probably in the early 1930s, the Rio Grande added a second restroom at the opposite end of the car by copying the original. This reduced seating capacity to just 40 total. About this same time, Coach 284 was outfitted for operations on the Rio Grande's branch line from Antonito, Colorado to Santa Fe, New Mexico. This route, nicknamed the Chili Line, traveled through a sparsely populated and arid yet beautiful landscape. 
bilingual lettering was added at the same time to help the line's many Spanish-speaking patrons identify the correct restroom for use. Specifically for Chili Line service, two distinctive bay windows were added, one on each side of the car. Mixed trains commonly ran on that line, with freight cars and passenger cars being pulled in the same consist. The coach in mixed service was therefore also acting as the caboose, and the bay windows allowed a clear forward view of the entire train. A brake valve and air gauge were installed nearby, so trainmen could keep a watchful eye on the train's brake pipe pressure too. Our 1881 vintage coach went into the shop once again in 1939, this time for installation of electric train lines along with air signal and steam heat pass-through lines. These systems were specifically installed to facilitate operations between Alamosa and Antonito, as the coach bound for Santa Fe was cut into the Rio Grande's upgraded San Juan passenger train between these two points. Heading south from Alamosa, Coach 284 would be dropped off at Ananito, and the San Juan would continue west to Durango. Car 284 would then be made up into the Chili Line mixed train that would in turn head for Santa Fe. Although Car 284 was not equipped with steam heat, pass-through lines had been installed to supply the other cars in the San Juan train set. Electric lights were added aboard Coach 284 at this same time but the oil lamps were kept in place as they were still needed between Antonito and Santa Fe. We don't know when the single pane windows were replaced with the double pane style that the car features today. However, these changes likely happened when the car was in the shop for other work, possibly as early as the 1920s, but definitely prior to 1940. The next year, 1941, the line to Santa Fe was abandoned. Coach 284 had the somber duty of bringing up the rear of the very last mixed train to operate between Santa Fe and Antonito. By 1946, the bay window had been removed since it was no longer needed. Coach 284's service life could have been over at this point. In fact, a number of the Denver and Rio Grande Western's narrow gauge coaches were sold off to the National Railways of Mexico in 1941. Luckily, this 1881 Pioneer remained on the roster, likely because of the upgrades it had recently received. It was essentially held in reserve for use, as needed, on the railroad's regular passenger trains or for special excursions. Our coach occasionally traveled on the San Juan between Alamosa and Durango probably because either the regular cars were in the shop for repairs or because of seasonal ridership surges. The assigned cars on this train had been rebuilt in the 1930s with enclosed vestibules, steam heating, electric lights, and more spacious seating. Thus, having Coach 284 join the consist with its old-style seats, coal stoves, and other throwbacks must have been curious for regular passengers. The San Juan passenger train was discontinued in the early 1950s, and more parts of the Rio Grande narrow gauge system, specifically the route over Marshall Pass, were abandoned at this time. The struggling Rio Grande Southern running between Durango and Ridgeway also ran its last trains around the same time. These abandonments further limited coach number 284's future operating options. But by 1950, the car already had a new lease on life. The railroad's Durango to Silverton line was experiencing a ridership boom. Coach 284 was painted into the grand gold colors that had been introduced a year earlier on some of the Denver and Rio Grande Western's standard gauge passenger locomotives and at the 1949 Chicago Railroad Fair on narrow gauge locomotive number 268. This somewhat garishly decorated locomotive ended up starring in the 1952 blockbuster movie Denver and Rio Grande filmed along the Durango to Silverton line, and the movie popularized the narrow gauge forevermore. The bright gold, black, and silver colors have graced the trains on the Silverton line ever since, right up to today's operations under Durango and Silverton ownership. In the early 1960s, Coach 284 was again overhauled. Tourist traffic continued to increase on the Silverton line, and the railroads struggled to meet 
not only the additional demand, but also the increasing expectations of a non-railroad enthusiast clientele. A couple years later, flush toilets replaced the dry hopper style that had been integral to the car since its beginnings. At that same time, drinking water tanks were incorporated into the restroom walls and two more seats were added back in, increasing the seating capacity of the car to 44 total. In early 1967, the Denver and Rio Grande Western hauled several of the Silverton's passenger cars to the Burnham shops in Denver for a major rebuild. Unfortunately, the railroad determined coach 284 was too far deteriorated to be economically rebuilt. The railroad had begun constructing open-air gondola cars for the Silverton, which added capacity and were quite popular with tourists. The trucks or wheel sets from older coaches were desirable for these new cars, so coach 284 was dismantled, with its wheel sets and mechanical gear being salvaged for reuse. The service life of this 1881 coach had suddenly come to an unexpected end. Luckily, the story doesn't end here. As the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad was dismantling the car, the Colorado Railroad Museum stepped in to purchase the body of coach number 284. It was transported to the museum in Golden, where it was placed on freight car wheel sets. In the early 1970s, the car saw minor repairs and repainting into the earlier Tuscan red colors of the Rio Grande. For well over a decade, the car was displayed this way. It was then repainted in Pullman Green, which it sported for several years. But by the early 1990s, Coach 284 had reached the point where major repairs were urgently needed. The coach sides were bowing out, the roof was sagging and leaking, and the exterior woodwork was badly deteriorated. A major restoration was thus undertaken. It's fair to say that this project touched nearly every component of coach number 284. By the time it was complete, over five years and 7,000 hours of both paid and volunteer staff labor had gone into the restoration effort. Every proper restoration starts with research. A restoration period must be chosen based on the current condition and completeness of an artifact, and consideration should also include changes made to the artifact over time. After considering Coach 284's present condition and its many different in-service rebuildings and appearances, the museum chose a restoration period between 1939 and 1942, when the car had served on the Alamosa to Santa Fe Chile line. New frame members were installed on the car's sidewalls, lower side roof area, and end platforms. New top plate beams were required along the tops of the walls. New siding, letterboards, platform decking, and underframe sheathing were added along with an all new soldered metal roof. The car's interior saw all new flooring installed, plus a complete stripping and refinishing of all woodwork. Bay windows were replicated to match the restoration time period, and all new paint and lettering were applied. Other interior work included reinstalling the water coolers, which had been in place outside the restrooms during the car's chili line service period, and rebuilding and reupholstering of the seats with plush mohair. A pair of replica wood and steel equalized passenger trucks, or wheel sets, was constructed including the outside bearing cast steel bolsters that had been retrofitted to Coach 284 for stability back in the 1920s. All of this work was complete by 1997. Later, the museum also replicated and replaced the brass oil burning ceiling lamps to top off the project. Today, this 1881 vintage passenger coach really shines. Listed on the Colorado State Register of Historic Properties, Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad Number 284 is fully functional and a favorite of Colorado rail enthusiasts. It sees use throughout the year during weekend steam train operations and also in conjunction with special events including Day Out with Thomas and the Polar Express train ride. This pioneering narrow-gauge coach remains a fitting example of a Colorado railroading icon that dutifully served residents throughout a lengthy period of significant expansion and change for the Centennial State. It's also an especially germane reminder 
of how railroads in Colorado touch the lives of people from many different economic, social, and cultural backgrounds. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed our tour of Denver and Rio Grande Western Coach 284. I also hope that your appreciation for Colorado's rich railroad heritage continues to grow with each and every tour of the museum's collections. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.